Okay, Math Nines, welcome back. In this video, we'll look at Chapter 4, Linear Relations. Okay, and specifically, we'll look at using uh, words, table of values, graphs, and equations to solve problems involving patterns. Okay, so first of all, a linear relationship is just a relation that has a straight line graph. Relation that has a straight line graph. Okay. Okay, so the degree of a linear relationship is 1. So we talked about degree before, now where we're looking at the biggest exponent on our variable. So if we have a linear relationship like 3x plus 4, the imaginary, or not imaginary, we just don't usually write it, is the exponent on the x is 1, so this is a first degree polynomial, which will give us a straight line graph. Okay, So just first of all the difference between uh, an expression and an equation. So we're going to be asked to develop equations and we're going to be looking for keywords like uh, 4 more than a number. That's just taking a number and adding 4 to it. So if our number is x, then we are going to do 4 more than that, which is x plus 4. To write that as an equation, we set uh, that equal to another number. So that just means, hey, let's set that equal to y. x and y are pretty common uh, things that we use when we talk about linear relations. Okay, so 5 times the number would be, hey, that's just 5 times x. To write that as an equation will be y is equal to 5x. 2 less than a number, less than tells us that, hey, let's take our number and subtract 2 from it. Our equation would be y is equal to x minus 2. And then a number divided by 10 is just going to be our number divided by 10. Okay, and write that as an equation is going to be y is equal to x over 10. Okay, so an expression does not have an equal sign, an equation does. Okay, that's the big difference there. Okay, so we can show relationships in several ways. Uh, these ways are in or with words. So if we look at that first example, uh, we'll look at an example and go through each one here. So we had four more than a number. Okay, so we can also represent that with a table of values, which I'm going to short form from here on in as TOV. A table of values, uh, we'll do that over here on the right where we have, okay, well, if we have a number x, what is the matching y that works with it? So if we choose the number 0, 4 more than that number is 4. Okay, if we choose the number 2, 4 more than that number would be 6. And if we choose the number 5, 4 more than that number is 9. I'm just choosing random numbers here to, uh, to just say, hey, these would be, we like to call x's our inputs. And then our output is going to be whatever our y is. Okay, and these things are going to end up giving us um, a bunch of coordinate points that we can then put onto a graph. And that's our third way to uh, show a relationship. So on our graph, uh, we can go down and plot these points. So each one of these numbers in the table of values gives us a coordinate point. Okay, so 0, 4, 2, 6, and 5, 9 our coordinate points that go on on a graph okay so just some graphing basics first of all uh, here we're talking about a Cartesian plane Cartesian plane gives us a vertical and a horizontal numbers to uh, reference and plot on a graph okay so uh, we always have our coordinate points listed as x comma why? So we think of, hey, where are we going to find the point 0, 4? We can go and, and look at the x coordinate. So we start at the origin, and then we go 0 units in the x direction, and we go up 4. So 0, 4 would be on our graph on the y axis, um, as is shown here. Okay, the next one is 2, 6. So if we start at the origin, go over 2 and up 6, here is another point that would lie on this graph. 5, 9 would be a point. Looks something like that. Okay, and this is, if you draw a nice, with a ruler, not like I'm doing here, nice uh, straight line graph. Okay, so we always state the x first and then the y. Okay, so if we do have a line, uh, lines are just made up of points. Lines 
are made up of points. Okay, and the last thing that we'll note here is that points must always work in an equation. Must always, and I'm just going to put work in quotation marks, work in an equation. Okay, so the last uh, way to show a relationship is to use an equation. So we'll put that here. And for the example that we're looking at here, our equation, as just shown above, is just going to be y is equal to x plus 4. Okay, so for any one of these inputs, we can choose, uh, let's say, 2. can choose 2 and put it into our x, and we can solve for that y. y would just be then 2 plus 4, which is 6. So we end up with a y that, of 6 that matches the 2 that we put into it. Okay, we'll cover lots, uh, we'll cover this uh, a whole lot more. Okay, a good resource to check out. Just going to flip over here to Google and uh, type in math is fun graphing. Okay, if we go to that first site that we see and scroll down, uh, we get, scroll down a little bit and you can explore. There are three sites here that are pretty good. Uh, properties of a straight line graph. There are properties of uh, quadratics. Uh, that is where we have a degree of two. And then finally, we have Cartesian coordinates. So if you're looking for a little review on, hey, how do uh, Cartesian coordinates work? Uh, we can go into this app and just say, okay, well, here are some coordinates. Uh, this one up here is seven, three. So if we start at the origin, we do the X first. So we go seven units in the X direction and then up to three, boom, there's our point. Okay, and you can drag this around to say, okay, well, what happens if I just put this thing here? What's that coordinate point? Okay, well, that's gonna be four, three. We go four in the X direction and then up three in the Y. Okay, this other point, over here shows us the negative x and y direction. So again, if we uh, start at the origin, it's telling us to go uh, negative 9. So that's 9 units to the left in the x direction. And then negative 5 in the y direction means to go down 5. Okay, and we'll find that coordinate point. Okay, so that's just a, a quick review of what uh, or how to get co uh, coordinate points onto a graph. Okay. We flip to the back side, we'll look at a few examples of how we'll, we'll apply this stuff. Okay, so in example number one, if we look at a landscape designer that uses wooden boards as edging for the plots in a herb garden uh, for each one of these, so we're going to relate two things. We're going to relate um, plots and the number of boards that it takes to make that plot. So in this first plot, if you count the boards that surround it, you have one, two, three boards. Okay, and I'm just going to short form that to B, okay, because we're going to be relating plots and the number of boards. Uh, two plots, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven boards. With three plots, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And you start to get the idea that we're going up by three each time. Okay, and four plots, we're going to have 13 boards. Okay, so if we were going to describe uh, this relationship with words, we would say as p increases by 1. So use some short forms here using an up arrow showing increases. So as the number of plots increases by 1, the number of boards, or b, increases by 3. Okay, so there's some words just to describe what's going on there. Okay, so if we relate that in a table of values, I'm just going to take the information from above and put it into our table of values. Okay, so uh, with one plot, we are going to have four boards. Two plots, we have seven, three, ten, and four, thirteen. Okay, so in this table of values, we start to recognize, hey, what is, how much is our uh, left side or our plots increasing by each time? We're going up by one each time. On the right side, we're going up by three each time. Okay, we're going up by three. And I'm putting this in here because this is going to help us come up with an equation in just a minute. Okay, so to show these, uh, to show this relationship on a graph, we're going to take our table of values and just find and plot the coordinate points that get generated from that table of values. Okay, so our points are going to be 1, 4. Okay, so here's 1, 4 on a graph. Okay, 2, 7. We go over 2 in the x direction, up to 7 in the y. Our next point is 3, 10. So 3, 10 
is up here. And then 413. 413, well, 13 is actually even off the board here a little bit in the y direction. 13 would be up here somewhere. Okay, and then what we see is, hey, we get a nice straight line there. I'm not going to join the points of, um, of this graph, and we'll talk a little bit more about that, uh, mainly because we can't have... Um, we can't have half a plot or half a board. So we're plotting the number of plots or P on the X axis and on the Y we're plotting the number of boards or B. Okay, so this time we're not really dealing with X and Ys, we're dealing with uh, Bs and Ps, okay? So I'm gonna come back to the table of values here and this number that we're, we're going up by each time three I'm going to use that to create an equation that represents what's happening with this situation. So I'm going to draw a big arrow back to uh, over to the other side because that is telling us if we're going up by 3 each time, that means that we need to multiply. So sorry, to get the number of boards, we need to multiply the number of plots by 3. And then we're going to need to add in some other number to make this thing work. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use a point... Um, in this equation to find out what this number or this question mark is so that we can come up with an equation for this situation. Okay, so let's use the point 2, 7. So that means that our P is 2. So that's all that is is taking 2, putting it in where P is, taking 7, putting it in where B is, and then asking ourselves, well, what does that number have to be to make this thing work? Okay, come up here. This is just 7 is equal to 3 times 2 is 6. 6 plus what is going to give you 7? Well, 6 plus 1. That's the number that we're looking for. And that number is going to go into our main equation for this thing. So our equation for this situation would be B is equal to 3P plus 1. Okay, so we've represented that relationship in four different ways. Okay, skip down to example number 2. Here we have a table of values for the height of an airplane at any given time t is given to us. Okay, so we are to determine an equation for the height in terms of time. Okay, so first of all, I'm just going to describe this in words. So as t increases by 1, height is going to decrease by 300. Okay. And similar to the example above, I'm just going to put my numbers here just to show, hey, this is going up by one each time on the left side, or as time increases by one, what is happening is we are dropping or decreasing by 300. Okay. And this number, as it increases each time, it has to be the same for it to be a linear relation. Okay. So similar to before, I'm going to take this 300, draw a big circle over here, big arrow back, and that is telling us, hey, to find the height, we need to take that number, negative 300, multiply it by time, and then add some constant to make this thing work. Okay. Okay. So now I'll just pick a point similar to before. We'll use, uh, let's just say we use the point 1 and 9700. So now we're saying, okay, well, for the height to be 9,700, t has to be 1. So negative 300 times 1 plus what is going to give us 9,700? 9,700 is equal to negative 300 plus what? Well, that number has to be 10,000. It's got to be 10,000. Okay, and that is going to be our constant that is going to go into the general equation for this situation. Okay, so if I draw another arrow up here, this general equation is going to be h is equal to negative 300 t plus 10,000. Sorry, I had to use two lines there, a little short on space. Okay, so the big idea in this section is we are going to represent relations. with words, table of values, graphs, and equations. Okay, hope that gets you started with uh, chapter four, linear relations. Uh, thanks for watching and we'll see you soon.